This is my 2010 Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition. This has 194,000 miles on the clock and it's what I've used in all of my latest videos including the Overland movie and we're about 15 days into our latest trip and I figured it's about time I did a walk around and showed you all of the things that I use, things that I like, things that I don't like, basically every modification I've done to it. I'm going to put a list of all the major mods that I have in the description but I also got more information on the equipment I use and details on the 4Runner at revereoverland.com forward slash equipment and revereoverland.com forward slash forerunner so you can check those out too. This will be quite a long video because I'm going to try and go into as much depth as I can. I hope I don't forget anything because there's quite a lot of stuff on here uh, but uh, we'll start from the front on the outside, work our way back and then we'll do the same on the inside. Starting at the front here, I have an ARB Deluxe Bumper. I like the look of it, but it is very big and it's very heavy. There are a couple of reasons I chose this bumper. Uh, one of them, actually the main reason, was it uh, was very quick delivery. It came in a week and a half, and I needed something before I went out to shoot the Overland movie last year. Um, it does also have crash protection, so it's got built-in crumple zone, and as far as I know, it is the only bumper that uh, continues to work with your front airbags, which is quite important. Um, I did try and get the CBI bumper. Uh, I like the look of the CBI ones more, and they don't stick out quite as far. Um, so if I was to do it again, I probably could, would go with CBI, but um, they, <laughs> their wait time was far too long for me. Um, so built into the bumper, I have a Smitty built. X2, I think it's X20 or X20 uh, winch. That's 10,000 pound winch. Uh, this one's got the steel cable on it. You can get it with synthetic as well, uh, but I got this on sale uh, on Black Friday a couple of years ago. Um, so it just, it was really good value. I couldn't say no to it at the time. Um, I also have lights on here. I've got Baja Designs lights. Uh, these are the XL Sports. And then on the sides, I have the S ones, I think they are, in amber. These ones are great. These have, uh, they project really far, so I like those. I got the amber ones for uh, dusty conditions because amber uh, doesn't diffract as much in the dust. But um, I've actually noticed these aren't really amber. If I go turn them on, you'll see that they're actually, they're more white. I've got a couple more lights um, on the hood here. These are the Baja Designs Squadron Sports with the yellow cover. And the, the cover on this is removable. Uh, but again, I like having that color. It helps with dusty conditions when I'm following people on the trail. Uh, and these are mounted on CBI brackets. Um, that uh, attached to the underside of the hood and actually really easy to install. For my lift, I went with the whole Old Man Emu kit. So I've got, um, on here right now, I've got the heavy duty springs uh, on the front and then the extra heavy duty, I can't remember what they're called, but the extra heavy duty ones on the rear. And I'll put those part numbers in the description so you can check those out. Uh, heavy duty springs are great for these bumpers and actually rides really nice even with those on. Um, helps with the weight of the front bumper and the rear bumper that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, and then I've got the Old Man Emu um, shocks front and rear too. I did, when I first bought this vehicle, have the medium duty suspension and I think that was perfect without the bumpers. So with just the rooftop tent and then loaded down, medium duty is the, is the way to go. I actually have the stock trail edition wheels on here. I really like the look of these. Unfortunately, I have scuffed them up quite a lot. And on this latest trip over in Moab, I did break two of the hubcaps there, the center caps. On the wheels, I've got BF Goodridge KO2s. I really like the KO2s, um, especially with the, the amount they wear. These ones, they are uh, 285 70 17s, and I've had them on here since I bought the vehicle pretty much. So about 50,000 miles, a little over 50,000 miles on them actually. And if you look, you can see that the, the, the tread is still really good shape. I don't know how that shows up on camera, but there's still plenty of tread on there for some of our trips. So I'd say I've probably still got another 10,000 miles or so on them before I have to replace them. I'll probably end up going with KO2s again just because I've had so many miles out of these. I am tempted to try something else though, so if you've got suggestions, let me know. For rocker protection, I have these rock sliders from Shrockworks, and these things have been solid. I have abused them. <laughs> They have come down, especially on this last trip, on a ton of ledges, and they have stood up just fine. They haven't moved at all. Uh, these are bolt-on sliders, and I know a lot of people say weld on uh, work better, but I've had no issues with these bolt-ons. Uh, I also went with these ones with the step here to help with getting in and out of the vehicle, especially for my wife who's currently videoing behind the camera. And for rear protection, I have the TJM dual swing out bumper. And this is one of those things that I have been less than happy with. It does the job, 
but not very well. You can see here that there's not a great alignment going on and that's because I actually came down onto a ledge, a rock ledge, and it dislodged the bumper. The bumper itself hasn't bent, it hasn't broken, but the way it mounts, the bolts shift when you come down on the bumper really hard. When we go around the other side, in fact, come around the other side and I'll show you, you will see that this side shifted up. So this is the side that came down onto the rock and it's moved up here and it's pushed this part of the plastic trim out. Uh, it's the second time it's done that and I'm hoping this time it's not as bad I'm hoping it hasn't broken the plastic retaining clip that's under here because it's $45 every time I have to replace it one of the things I do like about the TJM bumper is that it comes with these dual swing outs it's basically got most of what you need so on this swing out you've got a tire carrier and there's actually just a latch on the back that you pull and it swings out uh, when it swings out, it does lock out, so you've got this little tab here, and when I first bought this, I did a little review on it, and one of the things I mentioned is that dirt can get onto that, and it makes it a little more difficult to use. There have been times where it doesn't lock out properly, uh, or when it's been a little bit of a struggle to get it to swing back in again. Um, same on this side, it's got a little latch you pull down, and it swings out, and it locks out, and you can see that this has not gone up all the way, that is supposed to pop up. It goes up a little bit, so it does hold it out still, but you can see here how it's not functioning properly. Uh, both the swing outs come with a little drop down table like that, which is nice, an extra little surface for when you're uh, preparing food or getting things out of the back. The other thing it comes with is the high lift jack mount here. Everything else that I've added on this is separate. So on this side, I have a dual fuel can holder from Victory 4x4. Uh, I bought this one from them because it locks. It has a little thing that bolts on the top here, swings down and it locks on the top, but it doesn't work with my water jug here. So ended up spending a little extra for something locked that I can't even use. And then on the back here, I also have my antenna for my ham radio and I'll show that to you in a minute. So the only other thing on the back here is the trasheroo, and I know people make fun of trasheroos, but they are really functional. I really like having it. I, it doesn't necessarily have to be trasheroo brand. That's just who I went with because it was, I think, one of the cheapest ones. But I keep a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, in the top, I have trash bags. Um, I'll also keep open propane, the little one pound propane tanks in here. Uh, then inside I have a few things. I won't show you the actual trash because I'm sure you're not interested in that. If I do take a bear vault with me uh, anywhere where there's going to be bears, which is most of the places I travel. Uh, here in Colorado, where we're at now, there are black bears, which aren't nearly as scary as grizzly bears, but they still will try and get into your trash. And actually, last fall, when we were on uh, Last Dollar Pass, we had a bear paw print on the back of the Forerunner there where they'd been investigating the trash roo. Thankfully, I had all of my scented trash in here. So anything that had been in contact with food was in here and that was further down the trail. And the bears can't get into this, which is good because it means that uh, they don't get any kind of reward for coming near humans. It doesn't encourage them to interact with humans. You want to avoid that at all costs. And obviously you don't want them tearing open your stuff either. And then further down in here, underneath some more trash, I have one more thing which is filthy right now. So this is dust all over it. It is a Reliance toilet seat. This thing folds out and you get little baggies for it. So if you're somewhere where you can't dig a hole to do your business in the woods, then that's a great alternative. So now it's time to talk about what's probably the most obvious thing here, and that's all the stuff that's on the roof. Uh, I'll start with the part that really probably gets the least recognition. I very rarely talk about this because it just does the job. It's one of those things you don't know it's there, and that's the Prinsu roof rack. I, I went with this one just because I liked the looks of it most, but it ended up, even without anything on it, ended up being really, really quiet. It's really lightweight, so I, I love it, um, and I'll definitely, whatever vehicle I end up getting next, I'll have Prinsu roof rack on there again. On the front, I have traction boards. Uh, I just strap them on there. I went with generic off-brand, I think they're X-Bull traction boards. I bought them three and a half years ago, maybe. And at the time, they were $60. I was like, I'll buy these, and if they break or when they break, I'll upgrade to Max Tracks. And three and a half years later, here they are. 
still working and I actually used them yesterday to get out of some snow I was stuck in so they're doing the job just fine I also like them because they're a little thicker and they're good for leveling the vehicle when I'm uh, not on a uh, when I'm on a slope and then on the Princer roof rack is obviously the rooftop tent this is the tough stuff alpha and I really really like this rooftop tent there are several reasons I like it. The first one is one that I've been really happy with on this trip. It is super comfortable. It has a, I think it's like a two and a half or just over two and a half inch thick mattress that is really, really comfortable. Um, another thing I like about it is it's really quick setup. So I can have this up and ready to get into in about a minute and then maybe a couple of minutes to put it down again. It's actually so easy to set up that uh, Elizabeth uh, ends up, if she wants something from it, like she's got her pillow in it and she wants to get it out, then I don't care. I'll just pull over the side of the road, flip it open, grab the pillow, close it again. The third thing that I really like about this is just the amount of storage space in there. So in there right now, we have two winter sleeping bags, um, a wool blanket, a heated blanket, two pillows, and we can stack it all up at the back and it will still close with all of that bedding in there. So it's really nice, like there's very little to put up there when we get it ready. So let's move around to the other side now. And uh, I think the only other thing up there is the awning. On this side, I have the ARB awning, and it's one of those things that I use maybe like four or five times a trip, and when I use it, I'm really glad I have it. Most of the time when I use it, it's because it's really sunny and it's nice to get it out and get some shade, uh, whether I'm stopping for lunch or setting up camp, but also if it's raining, it's nice to have an extra little bit of shelter to cook under. Uh, a lot of people ask how I've got this attached to the Prinsu roof rack. Uh, I don't know if you can put the camera around here and show just back there, I actually have the bolts running directly through the slots on the side of the Prince rack. And then there is somewhere back, somewhere back here is um, like a metal bar that's bolted to. On this side, I also have two little outlets here that you may have seen earlier while I was talking about the bumper. Uh, this is for my water tank. I have a seven gallon water tank under the Forerunner attached where the spare tire went. And I actually have a video that I did on that. And uh, I think the link to that's on my website on the Forerunner build. Uh, but I can just undo these caps and I can hook up the shower that I built directly to that. And seven gallons is enough for about four very brief showers. So I told you this is going to be in depth. As we move into the inside, I'll show you my door pocket here just because it's got a ridiculous amount of stuff. Uh, so I keep wipes in here because I hate when my hands are dusty. I've got sunscreen, hand sanitizer, you know, all the important stuff in the door. Uh, and then as we go in, I've got on the side here, this is my aux beam switch panel. So that's what's controlling the, the lights. So I've got like the bumper lights, the hood lights there. Uh, and with this one, I can turn them all on and off individually, or I can push the center button and it turns them all on and off with just a single push. And further up, I've got my ham radio here. This is mounted to the windshield using a ram mount. And I've actually got, this is just the faceplate. The radio itself is under my chair. And then I've got the wire coming out the back here that goes to where the microphone plugs in. And actually, I'm gonna go around the other side and show you that. The wire for the microphone goes down under the steering wheel and comes up in the center console here. And I've got a little ethernet connector there that I just open up and I can plug the microphone into like that. And then this sits down here and goes onto this little uh, magnetic ball here. Although I lost the magnet on there. So right now it doesn't work. It just sits there. Next thing you may notice in here is the head unit. So this is the T9 from Car Trim Home. I did a full review on it. I really like this thing, but uh, it's one of those things that requires a lot of troubleshooting. Um, it's not plug and play. Uh, so if you're looking to get one of those, definitely watch my review just to make sure. It looks great in here. It looks like it's factory. Uh, and I use this for Gaia GPS, use it for CarPlay, use it for Google Maps, just everything works through this. Um, I've also got my front and the rear camera, so backup camera and a forward camera that work on this screen. So really nice system way better than the stock system up here i have another ram mount and this has my spot x uh, satellite messenger satellite tracker um, i went with spot because it was the cheaper between that and garmin uh, spot works great in north america if you're going to go worldwide or you're in the ocean uh, or you're in antarctica then you want to go with the garmin otherwise spot does the job one of the nice things about garmin is if you do end up using an ipad for navigation then you can use that as like your gps for the ipad but otherwise if you're just using your cell phone 
or something with GPS built in, then Spot works great. I guess it's worth mentioning the stuff you see up here. So this is what makes the Trail Edition special, or if you're getting a newer Forerunner, um, the TRD Off-Road or the TRD Pro, all of this stuff. Um, you've got crawl control, which I don't use very often. Uh, Multi-terrain select, which I use all the time, because uh, that affects how the A-Track system in the Forerunner responds to whatever you're on. So I can adjust the Forerunner if I'm on a loose, rocky road, I can have it on light, and it means that it won't break very much. It'll allow me to keep my momentum going. Uh, or I can turn it all the way to the other side if I'm on uh, rock crawling, uh, doing something like Hell's Revenge. That way, if a wheel starts to spin or slip at all, it will immediately break it. Uh, but one of the main things, is this button, and that's the rear locker, which is pretty useful. The only other thing to show you up front is gonna be this, which is the Red Arc Red Vision screen. And this is also on a RAM mount. If I push a button, hopefully it shows up on there. It'll show you the status of my battery. So at 50% charge, shows how long it'll last based on the power that I'm using. Shows you, here it have the power in. So if I started the engine, it'll show you about 30 amp uh, 30 amps going into the battery then you've got what's going out to the accessories the reason I have this up here uh, well first of all it's nice to just monitor the battery and see how it's charging but I actually use that to see if my drone batteries are charged I have them in the back and I plug them in and it'll show me how much they're pulling and when they're fully charged that'll go down I will also at some point be getting the red vision system and when I get that this is the control screen for the red vision system so these buttons you see around the outside they can be used to control accessories so I can actually get rid of my switch panel over there and I'll use this instead for my lights the whole power system is in the back of the vehicle uh, so we'll show you that one in a minute I think we need to go into the back seat now and show you the hot mess that is back there so as promised, it really is a mess back here. Uh, on this side of the vehicle, we've got uh, my luggage and Elizabeth's luggage. We're actually packed. I know we're on a 15, well, we're 15 days into this trip now, but we're actually packed for several different events, several different places. Uh, we started down here in Utah and Colorado, and it's June right now, so it's really hot in Utah. Uh, it's been fairly cold in a few places we've camped in Colorado, but we're also planning on going north this year, uh, probably later this month or next month. So we've had to pack winter clothing as well, because when we did it last year, it was really cold, especially up in Idaho. I also have all of my paper atlases in the pocket behind the driver's seat there. You see I've got a bunch of them for this year, just because I don't really know exactly which states I want to go to. So it's nice to have those for planning purposes. It's also good to look at those so if you come against a blockage you have to go somewhere else You can get an idea of where you're at and where to go uh, And those ones are the benchmark atlases They have all the unpaved the four-wheel drive roads marked on them And I've actually used them several times this trip as well uh, throughout Colorado just planning places to go So on this side of the vehicle you can see I've still got it stacked high But I lose about a third of the vehicle to my camera gear on this side so I've got my camera case here it's got my main camera second camera uh, gimbal I've got my main drone my fpv drone so there's a huge chunk of space to camera equipment underneath that i have the shower so this is the shower in the box get that out every few days um, we also hook up that to the propane and i know you're not supposed to keep propane inside a vehicle this is just for traveling so when we get to camp we take this out or if it's going to sit for any length of time this does not stay in here i am looking for alternatives uh, for ways to store this because i'm not really happy with the whole thing sitting inside the vehicle especially in utah in the middle you probably can't see this very well but we have the shower tent itself i've got a chair sitting over there i've got some like clothing i want to get to quickly so i've got like my rain jacket there my revere overland baseball cap very important that one, a um, couple of towels drying, all that sits in the middle. The reason I've got so much space in here is I actually took out the base of the seats and left those at home. So it gives me a whole bunch more room to fill up with camera gear and junk. I think the only other thing to show you now is the back. So I'll open it up and show you what's in here. The first thing you'll probably notice in here is the draw system. This was a custom built draw system specifically for the Forerunner, uh, built by a friend of mine who has the YouTube channel Shawnee Hills Workshop. If you want to see more really cool woodworking projects, including a, a custom built overland trailer that he did, then check out his channel. Uh, but we will be 
doing a more in-depth video on these drawers and we'll actually be selling plans for this that are specifically for the Forerunner. So I'll show you what's in this drawer first of all. Um, so I've got like basic cleaning supplies up here, um, stuff for doing dishes, wipes, because I hate having those dusty hands. You've got the catch-all drawer here. So it's like my hose for the shower. You've got a uh, mallet, stuff like tent pegs, chargers, an LED light. At the back, I've got some basic recovery equipment. Um, not the most important stuff because that needs to be easily accessible, but I've got like a small hatchet, shovel, puncture repair, gloves. I got my winch blanket there, uh, wired winch controller, also random thing of propane. We'll close that up and I'll show you the next one. Here is my stove for cooking. That's what you do with stoves. And then in here is all the kind of the food and the cooking equipment. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess I probably don't need to show you all of this stuff. I've got a oh, random drink. Keep my knives in there. This is just from Walmart, but I love these things. Uh, in the middle, got pots and pans, more disposable stuff, and cast iron skillet, which has been awesome to have. And then a little bit more food at the back there. I'll close that up. Then here I've got more food and drink inside the fridge, which is an Iceco JP50. If you've never owned a fridge, you don't know how nice it is to have. Uh, I will never go back to having a cooler. It is well worth, if you're doing longer trips, you know, a week or more, well worth getting a fridge. Um, something like the Iceco uses very little power as well. Uh, but I'll show you, it's on this drawer that comes out and it tilts down, which means that it's easily accessible to get to everything inside the fridge and to close it lift it up push it back in again behind the fridge i've got two more things of water so i've got a six gallon reliance jug of water uh, which is my main water supply and i also have a one gallon thing of water back there as well and that's more for filling up bottles using small amounts for cooking because i don't have to pull out the six gallons every time i need to fill something up on this side, I have a lifetime table from Walmart. It was $40 and it's really nice to have a large uh, flat space for working, for cooking. Uh, I have my Propex heater with me. Again, I know I'm in Utah and I know it's the middle of summer, but last year when we were up in Idaho, we wished we had this, uh, especially on one of the colder and more humid nights because that would keep us warm and it would keep us dry. Uh, and then sitting on top of that, I have more food. And then behind all of this, I have one more container that is uh, it's a Home Depot one. I can't remember the name of the brand. I think it's Rigid. Uh, it has my chainsaw and all of the chainsaw accessories in it. Uh, and then sitting on top of it, there's one little bag there with all my tire stuff. Uh, it's got my inflator, my, uh, my compressor, sorry, my deflators uh, and all of that. And then I do have another bag that's hidden away uh, under the chair. Uh, and that's my toolkit. And I find I don't need that that often, so I keep it underneath everything else. And I've got all of the basic metric tools that you need, uh, as well as duct tape, zip ties, um, epoxy, um, things like JB Weld, uh, and uh, just a random assortment of nuts and bolts, which actually end up being really useful. On the sides, for a little more storage, I've got two Molly panels. Uh, these are from Cali Raised, and I actually picked these before I had the draw system. I went with the Cali Raised ones because they extend down further, uh, so you get a lot more storage space on them. On this side, it's really, there's just a few things on here. Uh, I've got my first aid kit, actually got two first aid kits. This one's like my trauma kit, so if you're bleeding and dying and you need immediate aid, this one's the one to grab. A little further back and a little harder to reach is just like your daily one. So it's got like band-aids, neosporin, that kind of thing. And then on the far end that you actually have to access from the uh, back pass and, oh, back, back door there is um, some recovery stuff. So I've got um, the winch controller. I have a couple of shackles attached to the molly panel there. On this molly panel, I basically have my entire power set up and I moved the boxes so you can actually see it a little better. Uh, at the very top, you've got the, the brains of the system. This is the Red Arc Manager 30 and this keeps the battery charged and monitors the charge of the battery. And this is what hooks up to the screen that's in the front seat. Uh, this will charge at 30 amps which means that every hour I'm adding 30 amp hours to the capacity of the battery. Uh, and 
at 100 amp hours, it means I'm fully charged in a little over three hours. Uh, and this can do uh, 12 volt DC to DC. So when the engine's running, it charges at a little over 30 amps. I can do solar uh, and I can plug it into a wall as well. Uh, and I really like this one, well, for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's got the, the monitoring up front, but also being able to plug into a wall is nice because I don't daily drive this vehicle. So it sits at home for a few weeks at a time and I can keep it charged uh, and maintain the health of the battery. Underneath that, you've got the distribution block. I'll talk about where that goes in a minute. Uh, and then I have the inverter here. And this is just a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And you'll see I've actually got this wire coming out of it now. This is an extension cord that goes up to the tent. And that's how I'm running heated blankets, plugging up accessories in the tent. I do also have a 12 volt extension, but I find that it's just, it's easier just to use this, just the one thing going up there. And there's enough capacity in the battery that the inefficiencies don't matter. Talking to the battery, that is hidden right here. It fits perfectly down the side there. I, I'm not gonna pull everything out and show it to you. Sorry, you'll just take my word for it. Uh, it's just a 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate battery hidden there. And then I think the only other thing to show you is the, uh, well, the accessories. And those are on this side. This is like my little charging station. So I've got my drone battery charger there. I have two micro USB outlets, two USB-C outlets, and just keeps everything charged right there. And I think that's it. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, hopefully you're still watching. I know this video has taken a very long time to film. Uh, it's probably a very long one to watch, but uh, I do hope it's interesting and relevant to you. If you've got any questions, let me know. Definitely drop a comment. Uh, thanks for watching.